Shirley Gibbs, the mother of the young man in question, said that her son had left their home in Mabaruma Region 1 on February 12 this year and returned home the afternoon intoxicated, where he attempted to take his own life twice. That's why she contacted Regional Chairman Brentnall Ashley to help her transport him to Georgetown for medical and mental health treatment. He said he will see a possible way where he can assist me. Very well, on Thursday afternoon at 2 o'clock, he came by me and he said, Shirley, I, t I spoke with some indig the indigenous people in Georgetown. They say you have to get an... The only way for... I just say is you have to go and get a referral from the Marbrum Regional Hospital, which I did. And on Friday morning, Mr. Brent Nalashley, he was willing to assist me in bringing him, accompanying him out to Georgetown. There he left. He, he bring her, brought him and he was at the Armenian. He stayed at the Armenian hostel all the time. Ms. Gibbs stated that on the Monday following her son's arrival at the hostel, he was taken to the clinic with a nurse and they returned to the hostel. She explained that's when false allegations about the regional chairman began to surface. And from that Monday onwards, Alan Adams, who is the uncle, started broadcasting, talking a lot of ill things about how the regional chairman bring my, my son to Georgetown and how we interfere with him and how we leave him in a, in a hotel room. Um, abandoned him there for three days and on the 20th of on the 20th of February he sent out a phone a cell phone and uh, and three thousand dollars for him at the army hostel the distraught mother who is also presently staying at the hostel with her son further explained that prior to her arrival there the young man's uncle sent money for him at the hostel again he subsequently sent his son to collect her son from that hostel and take him to an aunt's residence in Suzdike, something she knew nothing of and never permitted. My son was there for three days. He didn't notify the supervisor at the Armenian hostel because when I came out here on Saturday, the 2nd of March, I was told by the, the caretaker there that my son was out without her permission. According to Ms. Gibbs, on Monday, the Child Care and Protection Agency and its probation department took her and her son to a location on the east bank of Demerara, where they spent most of the day answering questions as part of the ongoing investigations into the matter. She said after this, they had to visit the Brickdown Police Station. They do no mental test. All they do is because they, they, what is room in the paper, how Patrick that's it. The only test they did at breakdown. Patrick is the RC. Yeah. Oh. And which when the doctor there at breakdown, he said, why you bring this by here for? This is politics. You understand? And so the police say, do it, man. Do it. We got to please her. We got, we got to do our work because it is published that they reported a breakdown, which no report was not there. So by the seat, they say that they reported it. That's how come they end up had to please them. She added that all she wants is for her son to receive the necessary treatment so that they can return home in Mabaruma. Ms. Gibbs divulged that her son was born in Venezuela with water in his head, but grew up as a normal child until the age of 15, when he began to have seizures and other physical ailments. Reporting for the Evening News, I am Kristen Macklingham.